Over a decade ago, we posted this video of students making lipsticks in the labs at LCF. We posted it on YouTube with no context at all and called it How to Make a Lipstick. To this day, it's still one of our most viewed videos ever because who wouldn't want to know how to make their own lipstick, right? The thing is, people had questions, and rightfully so. I mean, check out some of these comments, because we didn't really tell you how to make a lipstick, did we? What we should have called it is, look at our labs, people are making lipsticks. If you study cosmetic science at LCF, this could be you, which would have been less catchy, but more accurate. Last year, we celebrated 20 years of cosmetic science at LCF, a unique course which for a long time was the only one of its kind. To celebrate, we've made a new version, How to Make a Lipstick 2.0, this time with a bit more detail. Still about lipstick, kind of. Obviously, we can't give away all our secrets, can we? In the video that was made before, they were using a wax base and added a, a pearlescent pigment into it. What we've done today is gone step by step, so added our waxes, our butters, our liquids, so like our castor oil and the dispersion separately. So it's more of a from scratch. This way around we can control how much of each of the waxes to put in, which then affects the outcome. It's quite easy to make in a kitchen at home a lipstick that you would pour into a palette or gode and apply using a brush, but making a lipstick that will withstand mechanical pressure and maybe fluctuations in temperature is another kettle of fish. We cancel out the weight of our beaker on the, on the balance and then we add our least sticky materials, so candelier wax, then the carnauba, then the beeswax, then the shea butter. Then we add our oil, so we add uh, capric caprylic triglyceride and castor oil. Castor oil is the main material in our lipstick and this is a very commonly used material because it's so stable it has the right viscosity to create a good small crystal wax matrix. Because we can change the formulation and adjust it we can then go on to use specialist equipment to test it so we can use a texture analyzer and do cantilever tests and needle probe tests and the rheometer, and what those are all testing are the sensory things, the structure of it. We expect students to have an interest in chemistry and biology. However, chemistry is the main core science, but the biology is important because we apply cosmetic products in biological tissues, the skin and the hair, for example. The students should have an interest in being scientists, and they should have an interest in making innovative products, sustainable products, to meet consumer demands. They will be experts in formulation when they leave. They will know how to create products from scratch. They will know how different materials affect product properties, including the properties of the product, but also the sensory properties that we feel when we use products. They will have a good analytical skills to interpret product testing results really good critical skills on the making of new products. Students will get a great opportunity to work in the cosmetic industry for a whole year, a year worth of experience in the cosmetic industry that they have when they graduate, and so they will be very employable. Hi, my name is Amna Janine. I'm an MSc Cosmetic Science student at London College of Fashion, and this is Come to Lab With Me, Eyeshadow Edition. First things first, we had to choose a pigment and pearlescent, so we went on a little swatching spree and ended up going for this beautiful blue. All these products that we have at home and use every day, but we don't really question what goes into making them or why, why they work how they do. It's like the perfect combination of art and science. When you understand what's in the products and what these raw materials are, you can make more informed decisions about what you use. And also learning about how marketing plays a massive role because when you see lots of products in shops with big labels saying silicone free, preservative free, it makes you think as a consumer that it's not supposed to have those things. But the only reason why cosmetic companies put that on the labeling is because it's appealing to consumers and that's the, the current trend. What interests me about lipsticks and why I pursued so much studies on it is because of the science. Lipsticks can be quite simple and they can be quite complex. And the most fascinating thing is that when you just change the ingredients or the ratio or the concentration of them, you can yield completely different results. It combines both 
undergrad and postgrad, which is amazing, plus the placement here. While I was doing the undergrad studies, I was able to have a first complete set of tools. And after my placement, I applied them, but I also expanded it even more. I'm looking into replacing certain types of ingredients with others that are a bit more sustainable. Other than the market demand, we're actually looking at the substance of sustainability. There is the life cycle analysis or assessment, which looks holistically in the, in the environmental impact of a cosmetic. The most unique thing about this course at LCF is that it is only on cosmetic science, taught by cosmetic scientists, supported by cosmetic scientists. This is what we do, it's just cosmetic science. There's no stupid questions and everyone genuinely wants to help you. It feels like a comfortable environment to, to learn and to grow.